One of the reviews of Richard Russo's new book is the kind authors dream of. The reviewer had just one complaint. He wished the book were longer. Nice. Richard Russo lives in Portland and is the author of several novels, among them the Pulitzer Prize winning Empire Falls. His new book, The Destiny Thief, is a collection of essays. Whether writing fact or fiction, Russo is, at heart, a storyteller. I come from a long line of, uh, I'm trying to think the word that I want to use here on the air live, bull throwers, shall we say. I come from a long, I come has, from a long line of those. It and has I served like, you well. I like making stuff up. I like, I like improving upon um, um, events as they take place. And, and um, so writing nonfiction, writing th this particular book has been, uh, enormously satisfying, but I do feel I do feel like I'm a little bit in chains. I was reading an interview or an article about a writer just a few weeks ago, and, and it was someone who's written mostly fiction, and he's working on a memoir, yeah. and he said that it's much less satisfying. He prefers writing stories where he doesn't know the ending. Yeah. And I thought that was an interesting point. Do yeah. you sort of feel that way? Do you? Uh, obviously, you enjoy making stuff up. That, to you, is what's truly satisfying. But is that part of it, too, that you kind of, when you're writing a novel, you may not know where these characters in this story is going? I almost always don't. And that's one of the, that's one of the thrills of, of telling stories, I think, anyway. I, I don't think I would be doing it if I knew the ending all the time, because uh, then I'd just be playing out the string. And I like the surprise aspect um, of it. I was struck in looking at the essays in The Destiny Thief, because you've got a fair amount of advice on writing, good practical advice on writing. But what really comes through is your love of, as you said, being a storyteller. I come by it rightly. There's some stuff in this book uh, about my father. He and I would um, work road construction in, in the summer. If something funny happened on the job that day, he would tell the story on the way home in the first tavern, right? And then we went to the next one, and, and he would tell the story again, except it'd be a little bit better because he, he, he knew from telling it the first time what got the laugh. And by the end of the week, um, if he was still telling the story, it would have become so transformed that he would tell me the story because he had forgotten I was there. <laughs> and he was, t he was teaching me about revision <laughs> right? and, the, and the amount of time that you, have, that you have to spend on that. Well, that goes to telling funny stories. Yeah. One of the things that always runs, runs through your writing is a sense of the absurd, the comic aspects yeah. of the world. And there was a line in, in the book that struck me. You write, the problem for a writer with a genuinely comic imagination is not making things funny or even locating funny things in the world to write about. Rather, the problem is getting other people to see things as you do, to honor the truth of your idiosyncratic way of seeing. The comic writer um, understands the seriousness of the world in which we live, but also sees our efforts to negotiate, uh, to navigate this world, looking just for sometimes a little scrap of dignity, and the world just flat out refusing to give it to us. <laughs> the last essay in the book ends with this marvelous anecdote. You are at a conference in Bulgaria where they, you've been right. asked to appear, and you're up on stage and it's getting sort of toward the end, and they want to do something nice for you. So the band that is there up on stage starts doing a version of one of your absolute favorite songs by one of your absolute favorite artists. Yeah. Land of Hope and Dreams by Bruce Springsteen. Right. And you were emotionally pretty knocked out by that gesture, weren't you? I was. I was. Boy, my Americanness really comes really comes out overseas. And, and yeah, to, to, uh, to be there at, at, on television in Sofia, Bulgaria. Uh, and I turned around and saw the band, and when they began to play Land of Hope and Dreams, yeah, I kind of lost it there for, for a moment. To hear, to hear those great, that, that great American song by this, uh, I think, a great American writer, and to hear that. Um, um, being played on the other side of the world uh, and sung by a singer who might actually be singing phonetically. We're, we're really not sure how, I'm, I really wasn't sure if he understood the precise meaning of, 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 the, of the words that he was singing. Um, uh, it was an astonishing moment. If you would like to meet Richard Russo, he's going to be talking about his new book, The Destiny Thief, Monday evening at Print a Bookstore in Portland, where we did that interview. That event starts at 7 o'clock.